Hey there, nonprofit entities of the world. Thank you very much for joining in on this very special tutorial session. Uh, my name is Aaron Hernandez, and I am a customer support specialist here at Aplos. And today, I have the pleasure of showing you around the journal entry area within the Aplos software. Uh, in short, a journal entry is the rawest way of entering any kind of transaction you want into an accounting system, whether it be an Aplos or any other software out there. Uh, it is the standard format to do double entry accounting. So in other words, this means it is a way for you to notate both sides of a transaction that you are working with. Uh, journal entries are built from providing debit and credit values for each account involved with the transaction. Uh, so all journal entries will require that the values of your debits and credits match as this creates a balanced entry uh, on your books. Before we get into how to create the journal entry though, it's best to know how to properly distinguish when to debit or credit an account. Uh, so for that, let me go ahead and bring up this little cheat sheet here that I have on hand. All right, so this guy here. Uh, so this is a kind of T-chart account to kind of show you all the different types of accounts that you can work with in a journal entry. Um, and then what would need to happen if you are trying to increase or decrease the value of those accounts. So for this first column here, you see uh, all the different types of accounts that you can work with. So your assets, your expenses, your liabilities, your equity, and your income slash revenue. Uh, so, pertain so whatever account you are working with for the transaction, if you are trying to increase it, you would want to follow along with what it says here. If you're trying to decrease the value of that account, then you would want to follow these. For your assets and expenses, uh, if you need to increase the values of those, they're going to be debit values. All right, and then if you wanted to decrease the value of your assets or expenses, then those are gonna be credits. Uh, on the other hand, if you are working with liabilities, equity, or revenue, it's going to be a credit if you wanna increase the value, or a debit if you want to decrease the value. So uh, debits and credits, for those who may not be a little uh, familiar with the terminology here, uh, very different than what you would consider as a debit card or credit card. It is, those terms don't mean the same thing here as far as uh, the accounting side goes. So if, those are the, if that's the thought process that you're going through, uh, definitely don't worry about that. Kind of toss that thought process out the window um, and just focus really on what you see here on this chart of Debit just means you're increasing the value of an asset or expense. Uh, credit is gonna be decreasing the asset expense or the other way if you're working with one of these accounts. Credit if you're trying to increase a liability or a revenue. Uh, debit if you're trying to decrease a liability or revenue. Uh, what typically helps is if you can remember uh, the way it works for an asset and expense, uh, then it's easy to remember the rest because it's just the opposite of what an asset and expense are. So if you can remember assets and expenses, are debits to increase and credits to decrease, then just remember that everything else is the opposite of that and then you'll be all set to go. But also if you are not familiar with this terminology and how to properly debit and credit accounts, it is definitely helpful, helpful to have one of these kind of cheat sheet uh, T-charts on hand <laughs> that you can reference when you are working on journal entries. Uh, so now that we've talked about that part of it, that's pretty much the hard part because that's the meat of it. Uh, but so let's go ahead and look within Aplos where and how to record journal entries. All right, so I'm going to put this away for just a minute. All right, and so while within your Aplos account here, the thing you're, what you're going to want to do first is go into your fund accounting tab and go under the transaction subheader. From there in the drop down, you'll find the option for journal entry. So go ahead and select that. All right, and so this screen here, this is the journal entry area. When you get here for the first time, you'll see a blank form here on the right hand, uh, which is going to take up the majority of the page. And this is where you can actually start entering your journal entry. Uh, so at the very top, you would start by plugging in the date of your entry, which can be whatever date you need it to be today, uh, previous day, a future date, whatever that needs to be. Uh, once selected, then drop down to the memo line and put in a personal identifier uh, so that you can recognize what this transaction is for. After that is plugged in, then you would start entering in the accounts and funds that are needed for the transaction, along with any other details that you need to enter, um, as well as the values for the debit or credit, depending on what kind of uh, movement you are working with. So let's go ahead and start with a sample of uh, just a regular um, store purchase. So let's say that maybe today we went to Best Buy and we bought a new computer. So uh, today's date, I'm gonna leave that set there. And then for the memo, I'm gonna say Best Buy computer purchase. 
All right, so I know what that expense is for, what this transaction is for. All right, so account. The first account that this is gonna deal with, uh, because this is an expense, because I'm purchasing something, I'm gonna go ahead and select the appropriate expense account. I'm gonna go ahead and just call this miscellaneous expenses, or label this with miscellaneous expenses for right now. So select that account. Um, the fund is gonna be my general fund, just to keep it simple. All right, and then if I wanted to, I can plug in a payee here and an additional note if I wanted to. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the payee, and I'll just say it's Best Buy since that's where I purchased it. All right, and then if I had a custom tag in this custom field here, I could go ahead and apply that tag. But if not, you can leave it blank. All right, so those values are entered in. The last thing I want to do here is put in either the debit or credit value for this account. So now to bring back up that cheat sheet we were looking at earlier. So I am working with an expense account. And because this is a purchase I'm making, I am increasing the value of that expense. So if I want to increase an expense, that means it's going to be a debit value. So if I move this back over here. All right, so on the expense or on the transaction here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in the debit value for that expense account. And so uh, let's say that this computer purchase was maybe $200. So I'm going to put 200 here. All right, so now that is my debit value for the expense account. And now that is one half of the transaction here. <laughs> so the other half of the transaction is where is this money coming out of? So how am I actually paying for this computer that I just bought? Uh, so in that case, we can go ahead and do this next account line. And we're, we're going to say that it was coming out of our checking. We used our checking account to pay for this computer. All right, so plugged in my checking account. I'm going to keep it still to the same general fund. Uh, if I want to, I can still put the payee there, so I'll say Best Buy. All right, and so now, again, this comes to the point where I need to put either the debit or the credit value for this transaction. And so let's go ahead and bring this chart back. And so for asset accounts, since my checking account is an asset, and I am decreasing the value of my asset because money's coming out of it, it is going to be a credit value. All right, so let me move this guy back. And so now back on the transaction, um, under this checking line, I'm going to put $200 for the credit. And now I have $200 in the debit and $200 in the credit. So those equal out, which means this entry is in balance and I can post that transaction. And so all we're saying here is just that within, I use my checking account to make this expense. This is the expense account that it should be tracked with or coded to. Um, I have my payee name, so I know where I purchased it from. And then the debits and credits here are just showing the value of that expense. All right, so everything is good there. I'm going to go ahead and click post. And so now once you post a transaction and it's successful, it's going to land here in the left-hand side in your transaction list. So right here at the top, journal entry number six, today's date. Uh, my memo here, Best Buy Computer Purchase, if I click on that line, it's going to take me back to the original transaction. And so from here, I can just review the details or I can also click into any of these fields and make applicable changes if I need to. All right, perfect. So that is sample one of what a journal entry can be. Uh, so let's go ahead and try something else here. Uh, let's go ahead and do, let's do a, maybe a donation transaction. So let's go ahead and come back over here and we'll click start new journal entry. That will bring up that blank form again so we can create a new one. Uh, let's say that this one was maybe uh, on when, this past Wednesday the 12th. All right, the memo for that is you're gonna say donation from our friend Alex. All right, so donation from Alex. Now the account I'm gonna use here because this is a revenue money coming in, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select the appropriate income account. Uh, so let's go ahead and call this contributions income and still keep it to the general fund just to make things simple. All right. So then on the payee line, I'm going to go ahead and put Alex since he's the one that provided the donation. Um, and then now we get to decide if this is a debit or a credit. So bring it back up the sheet here. So this revenue account for contributions income. If I, so I have a revenue account, if I am increasing the value of my income, so since this is money coming in, I'm increasing that account value, that's going to be a credit. So come back here, 
And on the credit line, let's say that Alex gave $100. So we'll put 100 in the credit column. All right, so now we've shared in the system that there's money coming in. But now we need to tell the system where is it going into. So it's great that you have money coming in, but where is it actually getting deposited to? So in that case, the other side of the entry is going to be your asset account that it's being deposited in. Uh, so let's go ahead and say that this is maybe our savings account. So select savings, still to the general fund. You can put Alex's name here. And then uh, we need to figure out if it's a debit or credit. So coming back to the chart here. So now we are working with an asset account, our savings, and we are increasing the value of that asset. So if we're increasing the asset, it's going to be a debit. All right. So things things are probably coming, starting to click together now, hopefully. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug in that debit value first. So 100. All right. So now we have $100 for credit, $100 for debit, and then everything is balanced. So then we can go ahead and post that transaction. And then because it posted successfully, it now lives back here on the left-hand side in the transaction list. So there's journal entry 7, the date, my memo, and I can click on it to review the details again. Uh, something else to note about the journal entry page is that you do have some extra action buttons here on the right hand, top right-hand side. Uh, so once you have posted an entry, you'll be able to see these three options here. Duplicate will allow you to create a new journal entry using the same details from this previous one. So if I click this, it's going to start me off with a new journal entry with the same exact details. The only information I need to change is just the date of the transaction. Um, and then you can always click in here and make any other appropriate changes if desired. Uh, going back, let's go ahead and see this other one. So print will allow you to print out a copy of the journal entry that you're working on. So you can see the details of that journal entry and then you can print it out so you can have a hard copy on hand if you like to. Uh, and then the last option is delete. So if you need to get rid of this transaction altogether because uh, maybe it was a mistake or something, uh, you can always delete the entry from here. All right, let's go ahead and go through one more example uh, and then we can move on from there. So start new journal entry. And now let's say that this one uh, is going to be a bank transfer. So I actually want to move money between my checking and my savings account uh, because in the journal entry area here, you can do any type of transaction. It doesn't have to be between an asset or an income or liability and expense. Um, it can be any, any accounts at all that you need to work with. You can do within the journal entry section. Uh, so let's go ahead and say that, uh, let's say that yesterday, the 13th, I did this transfer. Let's say so bank transfer between checking and savings. Great. So now the first line here for account, let's go ahead and say this is checking and still keep it to the general. Uh, I'm going to leave the payee blank and the note blank. Now I need to figure out if this is going to be a debit or a credit. So I'm actually, so I'm moving the, the movement that's happening here is I'm taking money out of checking and I'm going to put it into my savings account. All right. So then from here, we just need to go to our little list here and let me pull that back up. Great. All right, and so since with the checking account, we are decreasing an asset account, this is going to be a credit. All right, so credit, and we're gonna say that we're moving maybe $500. All right, so we've got that in the credit box. So then the next account line, we're gonna go ahead and select the other end of that entry. So the savings account. All right, keep it set to the same general fund. And so now if we are increasing an asset, uh, so this savings account is an asset. So if we're increasing the asset, it's going to be a debit. All right, so now let's put that $500 there. So now credits, match the debits. Everything looks wonderful. Go ahead and click post. And so now back here on the left-hand side, you see uh, journal entry number eight here. There's the date, the memo line, and then you can see all those details again. And so again, what that did is it took money out of checking and placed it into savings. So your typical bank transfer. All right, so perfect. So that is how you would be recording journal entries here in this area. Uh, something else you can do within the journal entry area though is perform fund transfers. Uh, so not bank transfers like the one we just did, but these would be fund transfers. So this is if you need to reallocate some money within maybe your checking account from being assigned to the general fund to maybe being assigned to some designated fund that you have, like a missions fund or a projects fund, whatever that looks like. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you an example of what that is. So on the left hand side here, you have a uh, link that says start new fund transfer. So you would want to click that first. 
that will take you to this screen here, uh, which is going to be a form for you to fill out with uh, the details for that movement that's happening. Uh, so the first thing you want to plug in is the memo. So you can just say, you know, transfer between, we'll say funds for now. All right, so there's my memo. The date of the movement, we'll set it to today. Uh, within which asset or liability is the transfer happening within? Uh, so the example I just gave, uh, this is within our checking account. So I'm going to go ahead and select my checking account. And then how much do you want to move? Let's go ahead and say this is maybe uh, $200. All right. Now the source fund, this is asking which fund is the money coming out of? And that's going to be our general fund. And then the target fund, where is this money moving over to or being reallocated to? Uh, we're going to go ahead and say this is maybe our Save the Turtles fund. All right, so as you can see, we have everything filled out here. Uh, and so what this is saying is that uh, within my today, within my checking account, I am reallocating $200. And so it's going to be coming out of my general fund and moving into my Save the Turtles fund. So it's not actually changing the cash balance of the checking account. So if my checking account has a balance of $5,000, uh, it's still going to be at $5,000 at the end of this transaction. All we're saying is that within that $5,000, I need to reallocate 200 of it from general to save the turtles. So this way I can see how my money should be uh, divvied up between my checking account. All right, so I have everything listed here. I'm going to click transfer. And so now that transfer will live, also live here in the left-hand side. So journal entry number nine, today's date, and that memo. All right. Uh, so, and the last thing I did want to show you here on the journal entry page is this import tool. So if you are, uh, if you have existing journal entries that you need to uh, get into the Aplo system, uh, you can always use this import tool uh, so that you can download a sample file uh, to uh, copy and paste your journal entry data onto and then upload that file back from to this screen so that you can easily and quickly get that information uploaded into your Aplos account. So you don't have to manually type out those journal entries. You can just upload them to the system if desired. All right, but that wraps it up for today's tutorial session. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how to uh, utilize journal entries within the Aplos system. If you guys have any questions at all about this topic or anything else, please feel free to let our team know, and we will be more than happy to uh, help you guys get those questions answered. All right, thanks again, and hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.